Welcome to part four of my Introduction to Filming Techniques video series, which will be all about camera movement. But if you missed any of the other videos in the series, make sure to check out the links in the description below. There are many ways in which a filmmaker can shape or influence the audience's perception of what they're experiencing. The Oracle will see you now. But when dynamic scenes are created using stylistic, intentional, and motivated camera movements, the potential impact is even more pronounced. As a result, camera movement is one of the most effective ways to help visually narrate a viewer's perspective of the scene and can therefore significantly enhance your story. What is that? That's, what is, that's not a real rope. You get back here, young man. All right, so I think the most obvious place to start is with the static shot, which is a shot where the camera doesn't move or at least keeps the frame at the same size and angle for the duration of the shot. Static shots can be used for a variety of purposes like dialogue scenes or aesthetically beautiful shots where movement might actually distract or take away from the experience. But not all static shots are the same, as they can be filmed in two different ways. First, as a locked shot where there is no movement at all because the camera is most likely mounted on a tripod, and second, as a handheld shot where the camera operator physically holds the camera, usually trying to keep it as still as possible, but a bit of natural shake might also be added in order to give the audience a more realistic or subjective experience. Let's go! Now, the first group of movements that we're gonna be exploring are the ones that alter camera angles throughout a shot by pivoting, tilting, or twisting the camera while filming. First up, we have the pan shot. Are you saying pan? Or pan. A pan shot is where you pivot or swivel the camera from one side to the other while the camera remains in a fixed position, like how you turn your head to look left or right. Pan shots are generally used to track subjects moving across the scene from left to right or right to left, or to reveal new subjects or elements at the end of the movement that were not originally in the frame. While many pan shots are fairly slow in nature, some others are much quicker which creates a blurred motion while panning. These are known as whip pans or swish pans and are a great way to connect characters that might be separated from each other within the scene or to enhance transitions between scenes for creative effect, like in Scott Pilgrim. That 70s show also found an interesting way to use them for their 360 table scenes. Jackie, demonstrate. <laughs> Next up, we have the tilt shot, which is basically the same concept as a pan shot, except now the camera tilts up or down, altering its pitch angle, instead of pivoting from side to side. Again, with the camera in a fixed position, a tilt will mostly either just tilt the camera upward or downward, depending on the purpose of the shot but can also, on occasion, have multiple tilts in the same shot, like this example from The Kingsman. And while a tilt is typically used for anything that requires some sort of vertical reveal, like maybe an establishing shot or to unveil character details, and are obviously the go-to technique for tracking subjects moving vertically in the frame, they're also an effective way to emphasize the scale or sense of vertical depth within the scene or environment as well. But while many tilt shots will cover a large distance vertically, a subtle tilt can also be very powerful. The third and final angle changing movement is the roll shot. Come again. Well, that is gonna make one hell of a story. A roll shot is basically a twisting Dutch angle where the camera is spun on its roll axis, affecting how level the frame is compared to the horizon. This twisting movement tends to be quite disorienting to the viewer, as roll shots are often used to match or accent the spinning movement of something, and maybe to adjust the viewer's perspective or point of view. They can also be used to highlight shifts in narrative, like when Killmonger was literally about to turn Wakanda upside down, and to even reinforce theme, like the reversal of power between Batman and the Joker at the end of The Dark Knight. You truly are incorruptible. Roll shots can also be effective when filmed with an overhead shot, 
which are a creative and aesthetically pleasing way to present the environment of a scene or to add a dynamic perspective to action shots or fight scenes. Now, just as there are camera movements that alter the angle of your shot, there are others that physically move the camera through the scene, not only having an impact on composition, but also on the viewer's experience, which we will be examining in sections, starting with those that move the camera horizontally through the environment to get the shot. The push-in, or what is generally referred to as a dolly-in, moves the camera forward towards a subject, attempting to direct or narrow the viewer's attention, often pausing at the point of significance. This technique can be used to emphasize detail, emotion, or even a moment of importance or realization. While push-in shots can drastically change the shot size when covering a great distance, they are most often much more subtle, where the camera seemingly creeps closer and closer to the subject, suggesting that the viewer should probably pay close attention to what is happening in the shot. Jim never has a second cup of coffee at home. Another variation of the push-in is the push-through, where the camera essentially pushes through a visual barrier, bringing the audience along with it through the barrier into a new space, often ending with a push-in to top it off. But there's also what I like to call the push-past, or flyby, if it's an aerial shot. This is a movement technique that starts off by including the subject in the shot, usually from a back angle, but then the camera will push past the subject exposing a compelling scene where the subject is no longer in the frame. On the opposite end of the push-in, there's the pull back or dolly out, where the camera will pull out or away from the subject to broaden the scope of the scene to see who or what else is around. This is often done to accommodate some sort of action, to reveal additional context related to the subject, or to de-emphasize slash detach us from the subject. A great example of this is the final shot from Breaking Bad, where the camera slowly elevates, not only revealing more of the scene, but also, in effect, distancing the audience from Walter, making him increasingly less significant and ultimately disconnecting us from the story and the world of Breaking Bad once and for all. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. And just like the push through, there's also the pull back through, where we first see our subject on the inside, but then when the camera is pulled back through the barrier, we are exposed to the outside, giving greater context to where they are actually located. But what if your subject is now on the move and you want to join them on their journey with the camera? Well, then you're going to have to use what most people call a tracking shot. Come on, stand up. To me, however, tracking is more of a motivation for the movement rather than a movement itself. As a result, I tend to split each type of horizontal movement that tracks a subject into their own unique category as to better describe the movement at hand. First is the follow shot, where the camera trails behind the subject, putting the audience at the same perspective as the character as they move through the scene. This helps the audience identify with the character while also being able to observe them interact with their surroundings. A lead shot is basically the exact opposite, where the camera is seemingly being pursued by the subject. This allows the audience to see the front of the subject while in motion and is therefore commonly used for walk and talk dialogue scenes, to give context during a chase scene, or to showcase character emotions or expressions relevant to their situation. When the camera moves sideways through the scene, either left or right, while tracking a subject, it is called a trucking shot. This gives the appearance as though we, as the viewer, are moving alongside the subject while they are traveling. Trucking shots are often used during action sequences in order to keep up with characters that are running or maybe fighting while on the move. Let's go, Chrome Dome. I also call anything that tracks a subject from above a trucking shot as well like this example from The Matrix. Here we come. Fritz! Right now. But there are also side-to-side -side sliding shots that don't track the subject, which I classify as crab shots. This, often slower movement, is when the camera moves sideways through the scene, either to reveal something that was previously out of frame, or maybe even just at a different pace than the subjects, like this example from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They are also a good way to showcase more of a scene horizontally rather than cutting to a new shot. That is, of course, unless you're Edgar Wright, and then you do both, 
by stringing together a series of crab shots with invisible cuts. Where do you get off? The last of the horizontal movements is the orbital shot, where the camera literally circles or orbits around a centralized point of interest, sometimes really fast, completing multiple orbits, and sometimes really slow, only completing a partial orbit. This movement technique is a great way to focus the viewer's attention on or highlight any subject, due to the dynamic movement between the subject and the background. But while many people associate the orbit shot with posing superheroes, they are commonly used for many other purposes as well, like maybe displaying a moment of intimacy between two characters, presenting a spinning perspective of a battle or performance, revealing a moment of panic or fear, or maybe even to juxtapose the feelings of two opposing characters, like this example from Interstellar. Orbit shots, however, don't always have to be about the subject in the middle. They can also be an effective way to showcase the surrounding environment, which often means that the spin happens with the character facing away, or with a subtle pan at the end of the orbit. Now, at this point, it's important to note that because all of these horizontal tracking shots are motivated by the actions of a subject, specifically their pace and direction of travel, they are often used in combination with each other, either as shots cut together in a sequence, like this example from Arrival, or in a single shot, like this example from Birdman. Now, if you really want to step up your camera movement game, then you also need to learn how to move the camera vertically through the scene, which is generally referred to as a boom shot. Boom, you looking for this? <laughs> But just like I separated each horizontal tracking movement into its own category, I will do the same for the vertical booming movements as well. Starting with the crane or jib shot, which are both actually the names of the equipment or devices that the camera is typically mounted on in order to create these types of shots. These two terms are often used interchangeably to describe any movement the camera makes in the air, mostly up and down, but can also still include some lateral movement as well. A key element or characteristic of a crane shot is that they typically change camera angles throughout the movement by both tilting and pivoting the camera in order to keep the subject in the frame as the camera is raised or lowered to get the shot. This motion not only serves to keep the subjects in the frame, but is also an effective way to alter the vertical perspective of the audience. As a result, crane shots that lift the camera are often used to unveil mysteries over the horizon or to expand the scope of a scene, providing an elevated viewpoint. Going in the opposite direction, crane shots that lower the camera generally bring the audience down from extreme heights back to the same level as the characters, but can also be used to maybe just manipulate the audience's point of view for creative effect, like this example from Inception. And just like most other movements, a subtle crane can also be very effective. Next, we have the arc shot, which I think of as a vertically moving orbit shot that arcs over the top of the subject rather than around it. Although not very common, arc shots can be used to represent a character's emotional struggle, to reveal a story element in a unique, sort of first-person POV kind of way, or maybe even just as an aesthetically creative transition into an orbit shot, like this example from Euphoria. This brings us to the last vertical camera movement, known as a pedestal shot. This has all the same characteristics as a trucking or crab shot, but now the camera physically moves up and down through the scene instead of from side to side. Kind of like it's on an elevator. Strangers waiting up and down the boulevard. And while at times it may look somewhat similar to a tilt or a crane shot, a pedestal shot is different because it doesn't change the angle of the camera while ascending or descending. Therefore, by maintaining a straight angle or level shot throughout its movement, a pedestal shot can be a great way to track subjects moving up or down, or to slowly unveil the details of a particular character or even a unique environment that has a grand vertical presence. Although this last section doesn't technically include any moves that physically move the camera, 
it does include techniques that create the illusion of movement in a shot by making technical adjustments in the camera. And probably the most well-known of these techniques is the zoom shot, which is created by changing the focal length of the camera lens. Zooming in will make the subject occupy more of the frame or seem larger and closer, while zooming out will make the subject occupy less of the frame or seem smaller and further away. And while it may look like a dolly shot, a zoom does not change the physical distance between the camera and the subject, as it magnifies the image in camera instead. But since our eyes can't actually zoom, this type of movement tends to come across as unnatural. You got like three feet of air that time. Having said that, there are a few ways that a zoom is used for creative effect, like for a crash zoom, which is a very fast zoom that goes from wide to close quickly and usually adds a punch of energy or highlights a character's expression or reaction to something. The other type of creative zoom effect is known as the dolly zoom, which is a combo of a changing focal length, or zoom, with a change in proximity, or dolly. A dolly zoom is created by either zooming in while moving away from the subject, or by zooming out while moving closer to the subject. What? Both combos are meant to maintain the scale of the subject while you either expand or contract the background, creating what is called the vertigo effect. <laughs> nice! Last but not least, we have the focal pull or rack focus technique, which basically changes the focus from one point to another during a single shot. Whether you start with the focus on a subject in the foreground and then shift it to something else in the background or vice versa. Either way, the intent is the same, to precisely manipulate or redirect the viewer's attention to the exact points of interest that you want, when you want. What do you want? What do you want? I just, I just need a, a sound check. Just what wait. do you want? While each and every camera movement can be used to enhance the narrative of a film, it is important to consider that they are not always done in isolation. Many of the most interesting, inventive, and unique shots in movie history are either creative combinations of many different camera movements in one shot, or are a part of a series of shots that work together to tell the story. In some cases, the combinations of movements are done at the same time, like mixing a follow shot with a tilt, or maybe a pullback with a pan, or even a follow shot with a slow, ominous roll shot like this insane example from the movie Apostle. But the movements can also be done in succession as well, back to back, where you might follow a tilt down with a quick push in, or follow a push past with a tilt up, or maybe you even start with a crane shot that leads to an overhead pullback, like in Kill Bill. Now, if you want to learn about the many different factors that might influence or motivate a shot, then maybe check out the next video in this series. The link is in the description below. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.